Aha, there you are. A very good evening to you and a very warm welcome to Scotty McClue and the Scotty McClue Show live globally on Facebook Live right across the world. Lovely, lovely, lovely to have you all with us tonight, of course, and a very, very warm welcome to the programme. Now, we have lots to discuss tonight, so I hope you'll get to your Skype, right? We're actually live on Skype. And uh, you can come on and Skype in at scotty.mcclue. So there we are. And uh, if you've just joined us and uh, you're wondering what on earth is going on, I'm Scotty McClue. I'm the world's top broadcaster. And it's 10 o'clock sharp on Sunday night, Sunday the 14th of May, 2017. You're just in time for the very start of the program. We have lots to talk about tonight, and I'll give you all our subjects. Marcy Puffins watching, George Mullen, Angela Goodlett, Paul Wright, fantastic, Julianne, Scott, you're all there. That is excellent. Now, some of you are saying that you had a problem last week. There was no problem at this end, so I don't actually know what had happened. Anyway, sincere apologies for any hold-ups, any technical difficulties, but I do assure you they are out with my control. Now, what are we discussing tonight? I hear you scream at your devices, and we're looking at flags. Should we ban flags across the world? Because I think flags are false prophets, and I think they are divisive. Apart from the Scottish flag, of course, uh, the saltire, that uh, is a wonderful, wonderful symbol. But if you think about it, there's what's called the Union flag, the Union Jack, the Union flag, and um, that's supposed to be the British flag. But of course, there's no such country as Britain. You know, you don't have, Britain is an amalgam of several countries, so therefore it doesn't really have its own flag. Uh, no streams, says James Forbes. Well, that's up to yourself. Everybody else has got it. Good evening, Scotty Dinky Doo. Ron Baines watching. Evening, Scotty. Tom Morton's watching. A very, very fine broadcaster up in Shetland there. And I thoroughly enjoy watching Tom Morton on Saturday evenings. So there you are. Good afternoon from Florida, says Rob Wright. Dinky Doo. Neil Mills Jr. is watching. Guys, do put where you're actually watching from. That's fantastic as well because we are a truly global talk show. We're getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. I mean, the other night I was watching a certain television program, 10,000 people were joining me on Twitter and watching it with me. 10,000 of you. That's rather good, isn't it? Wadge says, not again. What's up, Wadge? Evening, Mr. McClue, says Neil James. Good evening, boss. Says Robert Bean. Everybody seems to be getting it, Wadge, so there shouldn't be a problem. And um, we will keep you abreast of anything that comes up during the night. What else are we talking about? If you were a refugee, and we've seen lots and lots of refugees in recent years because their own administration can't actually deal properly with people. So they end up in a, a war-type situation and have to become refugees. If you were a refugee... Where would you go and why? You have, to, you have to qualify it. You have to tell us why. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching the World's Top Broadcaster, Scotty McClue. And we're live on Facebook Live, but only for one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment. Not just for one nation, but for all the nations. Ralph Monks Jr., hello. It's never what since the Periscope thing. It looks like we're missing this week's one as well. Angie, the Periscope thing's got nothing to do with this. This is Facebook Live. Dave Hemsley's in Cannock in Staffordshire. Erica says, I'm from Tasmania, one hour south of Melbourne by plane. So she's in Tasmania. You'll be familiar with the Tasmanian devils, these little creatures. I don't know what they actually are again. 4G and no stream, says James Forbes. James, everything's working here. Julianne Scott says hers is not. Julianne, everybody else has got it, so there shouldn't be a problem. Watching from Sydney, Scotty, says Marcy Puffin. Dinky do to you, Marcy Angel, and lots of love to you in Sydney and Australia. Lexi Tracy is watching. I'm from Mars, Scotty, says Dino the Dug. Dino the Dug? I've thought that for a very long time. That does not surprise me. Send me lots of thumbs up 
and hearts, darlings. Remember, it's hearts and minds on Facebook Live with Scotty McClue. Lots of you watching now. Anything you see with Scotty McClue on it, share it. If you're on Twitter and you're tweeting, retweet anything with Scotty McClue on it. No matter how big you are, if you're a massive broadcasting organization, you get a tweet from Scotty McClue, speak to your Twitter people and say, just retweet anything Scotty sends through, by the way, because it will be important. Uh, yes, the Tasmanian Devil, says Erica. Absolutely. Evening, Scotty. Dinky do, says Lexi. Uh, Gary Cross is watching and Jim Clark's watching. Jim, you were telling me it was quiet tonight earlier. Well, it's also quiet on here on the Scotty McClue show, and it will fly in, guys. So stick with us big time. Uh, can you guys do me a favor? Can you have a look at my band video and uh, like it, please? Yes, we can, Julianne Scott. I'm a refugee. I've been hiding out in Paisley, getting DLA for years. Nobody sussed me yet, says Robert. Stop being silly, Robert. Do not joke about that sort of thing. Evening, my friend. At last you're on, says Jim Clark. Of course, we've been on since 10 o'clock sharp, Jim Clark. Jim Coyle is watching. That's excellent stuff. Now, so tonight, I'd like you to Skype in Scotty Dot McClue. We took a Skype call last week. Everybody loved it. Excellent. And uh, who else have we got? Anna Moyes. She's got trouble getting on. Guys, there's no point in telling me it's not working. It's at your end. Everything's fine here. Andy Grant's watching. That's excellent. And Finley Patterson. Now, you can follow me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Periscope. We've been doing a lot of Periscope broadcasts, so you can join me with them. You can follow me on YouTube. Please go on to YouTube and subscribe to Scotty McClue, the YouTube channel. Pop it into your Google. Just put Scotty McClue YouTube channel and go on and click subscribe. Johnny M. Linney and two others have shared the video. We'll have a share point in a moment, guys. Jim Coyle's with us. Michael Yule. Hi, Scotty. How are you tonight, says Jim Coyle. I am remarkably well for my age, Jim Coyle. I got invited to the opera, to Grand Opera on Friday night to La Bohème by Scottish Opera at the Theatre Royal in Glasgow. And uh, I was invited by special invitation uh, from delightful people, and I loved every second of it. If you get the chance to go and see it, if you're into big productions, the design, the set, fantastic stuff. Um, same Anna, I'm stuck on the buffeting signal. Been working fine since 10 o'clock sharp, says Dino the Doug. Scotty, what do you think about people targeting the NHS with computer viruses? It's shocking doing that for money. Well, I would hope that the NHS are well backed up and that they give these people nothing. So there you are. Uh, Joe Fraser's watching. Uh, me neither, George. Mine's all working. Angie, would you stop going on about that? You're creating a stushy. We've heard you the first time. If it's not working... It's not working. There's nothing the rest of us can do about that. There's no point in going, oh, mine's not working. So there you go. Uh, very, very strange. Right, Nicola Hunter is with us. Excellent, Nicola. Very, very good to hear you. If you've just joined us, folks, we're global right around the world. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, saying dinky do to you and a very warm welcome to the world's top talk show. We're hoping to get some discussion going tonight. I'm wanting to ban flags, right? Because I think they are divisive. And also, if you were a refugee, where would you take refuge and why? So excellent stuff. Story of my life, uh, says uh, Angie. I think I'll ban these people that keep going on about it not working. If it's not working, get it sorted. Get it working. Very, very easy to do it. The stream's working fine. These folk are obviously using two cans and a bit of string, says Robert Bean. Dinky do. Now, guys, can you share this video right now, big style? Share, 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 share. And type in, you know, actually type in. Use social media as it should be used. Type in, say, are you watching Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live, the new? Right-click on the link for the page and pop it in. That would be fabulous. 
Uh, so there you are. Hello, Scotty. Happy Mother's Day around the world. From D House of Bain and Etz, all USA. God bless everyone. D House of Bay Minette. A.L. USA, God bless everyone. That's Denise D.D. D. Nelson House in the United States of America. We say, Denise, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love to all, and of course, love to the United States of America, our breakaway brethren there. Would you ban national anthems as well, says Steve Burroughs? I don't know, I quite like there's our national anthems, marvellous, because it's God Save the Queen, and the Queen is apolitical. So there we are, we quite like that. Here's Sandy on. Uh, oh, he's on about politics and all the rest of it. Sandy, stop wasting everybody's time with that, right? Your mob are irrelevant now. They are toast. They've gone. Forget it. All right? They're more or less annihilated because they never backed independence for Scotland. Big, big, big mistake. So there we are. Uh, I was live for one uh, minute 46, says Hannah Boys. <laughs> and uh, a couple of you don't seem to be able to get it, but the stream is working absolutely fine, guys. So you need to sort out your equipment so you never, ever, ever miss a second of Scotty McClure or you miss a moment of live. Shields, says Jim Coyle. Thanks very much for that, Jim. And listen... A very big thank you, Liam Greenhorn's just joined us. A very big thank you to every single one of you who has shared and shared and shared without a thought for yourselves everything for the talk show. That's where you will benefit because it will come flying back. And um, what do you mean by decisive Scotty McClue? Well, Richard Mackay, you know what decisive means, right? You know what decisive means. Our national anthem, Flower of Scotland, says Johnny M. Linney. No, Johnny, our national anthem is God Save the Queen, and will always be God Save the Queen. And when Scotland becomes independent, our national anthem will be God Save the Queen. So there you are. And uh, what have we got? Scotty, toast is my word. You're stealing it, lol. What are we talking about tonight? We're talking about banning flags, Sandy, because they're divisive. I don't know if you've ever seen a flag. I'm not talking about the stones in your garden, the flagstones. We're talking about actual flags. And the British flag, if you think about it, is a bit of a misnomer because there's no such country as Britain. So you would really just have the Scottish flag or the Welsh flag or the flag of St. Patrick, uh, that sort of thing, or the flag of St. George. Uh, you would have that. Uh, is it me? I can't see anything. Yes, it's you, George. Absolutely. Indeed, it will not. I'll not be singing that dirge. Flower of Scotland is uh, quite a nice. It's a bit dirge-like as well, actually, but it was the wonderful uh, Roy Williamson that wrote it. Yes, excellent stuff. A fine fella. Wah, oh, McClue, Agnes has asked for a divorce after our Barcelona trip. And she also hates you. I am a broken man. I thought she loved listening to Scotty McClue. Everyone loves listening to Scotty McClue. They just don't always admit it, Gordon. So there you are. Independence for Scotland is not a priority of the UK government. Well, actually, David, it's a massive priority of the UK government. The UK government are in absolute panic that Scotland becomes independent because it means that uh, London could lose a lot of value. So there you are. Remember the Scots give you £40 billion a year and we get our beer money back via this ridiculous Barnet formula. So it's a massive, massive priority. But at the moment, I think uh, the British Prime Minister is trying to play it all down a wee bit, you know, because they've got all that Brexit stuff to get through. My good friend this morning woke up to his flag rope having been severed in Dundun. The knuckle draggers have now emerged from under their stones. There we are. Achoo, achoo. Scotty McClue, says Roy Brownlow. Dinky do, Roy? Uh, no, says Anna Moyes. I don't know what she's saying no to. Nonsense lol, says Dave Hemsley. So there you are. And if you're going to be a refugee, where would you take refuge? Now, while I'm on the subject, it, let's have a scenario here. Scotland becomes independent. Yeah. 
And then you've got England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Now, Northern Ireland could go back with its southern neighbour, right? It's only six counties. So they could just be sort of absorbed back in with their southern neighbour. And there's a lot of talk about that. Would you, or anyone you know, have any objection at all to the reunification of Ireland? Everything back into the Emerald Isle. It takes a special kind of person to vote against the independence of one's own country, says Rudy Zach. Well, it takes somebody who does not have confidence uh, to vote against independence for their own country. Somebody who's living in fear, somebody who believes all the propaganda that's thrown at them. And it's easy to do. That's why we have Scotty McClue, because you can trust Scotty McClue. Colin Rogers watching. Uh, I need to take the missus to Barcelona, says George. Yes, you do. And uh, don't tell me you're going to leave her there, aren't you? <laughs> you're giving the National away for nothing. In the noon, says Sandy Howden. Wonderful, Sandy. All very, very good newspapers have been given away for nothing in the day because it's more important that you read the newspaper than worry about your 15 pence. If you look at some of the uh, trashier newspapers, they're, they've been given away for pennies. So there you are. Uh, me too, I missed last week, says Dan McWilliams. Never ever miss a second of Scotty McClue. You miss a moment of life, Dan McWilliams. I love your tie, Scotty. Dinky do. Lovely piece of silk uh, just for you. I like to tidy myself up regardless of cost for uh, out of respect for you guys. I think it's important that I look as if I've made some sort of effort. So there we are. Love your tie, Scotty McClue. Dinky do. Uh, me too. Uh, Scotland will have its own national anthem. The monarch can do nothing but please try. Time to cut ties. Jim Coyle, you're talking out of your BS. The monarchy do nothing of the sort. They cost us 52 pence a year each. An absolute screaming bargain. And they bring in billions to the country. And they give us an alternative so that your prime minister or whatever is not the most powerful person in the country. There we are. They are appointed by the monarch. Um, can we name any country who has to date requested coming back under the wing of the British Empire? And if not, why not? No, really, that you wouldn't come back. That's the whole thing. I was thinking what the Scottish government could do is say to Westminster, look, we're going to go for five years. And uh, if you really are missing us or we're missing you, then we can talk again. We're going for five years. But I think if we went for five years, we wouldn't come back. Vicky Navarro's watching. Dinky do. Mwah. Vicky Navarro, give that big man of yours a hug. A fabulous guy. It was lovely to see the two of you last week. Out and about. Um, I took out a payday loan to send to McClue, just giving £300, and now Agnes has chucked me. Can you send me back the £300? Gordon, if that were the case, you would get your money back. There's not a question of that. We had a very, 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 very generous lady yesterday. The lovely Barbara Ann Haig. And she has taken us up to £400 on the GoFundMe. And uh, so GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Pop in two, five, ten, twenty thousand pounds. I miss a nice coal fire, Captain of the Peat. Lovely, says George Raffin. <coughs> I was uh, taking a tree down today, George. And um, uh, just a small one. But there were solid chunks of wood, and I thought they would go great on a fire. It's tragic, it's heartbreaking, but the poor thing had died. Um, Anna, uh, have you not got dishes to wash, says Robert Bean. Why, oh, sorry, Anna, is, is telling Anna she has you not got dishes to wash. Yes, absolutely. Scotland, the prodigal son. Lol, says Roy Brownlow. Lol, I've just a wee drink, guys. Mmm. Oh, that's gorgeous, it really is. Now, uh, is it time for sharing? Yes. Can we all share, 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 right now? Very important. <coughs> Pardon me. 52 pence per person being spent in the royal family does not sound much, but it cannot be justified when so many people are suffering in poverty and are being forced to use food banks. 20k. You do not realise. You do not see the big picture. I have heard this before. You can go onto YouTube and you'll see a YouTube. Scotty McClue explains 
the monarchy. Not that they need explanation by me, but it helps some of the people who don't know the bigger picture. Uh, otherwise, you'd never ever make comments like that. If it wasn't for the royals, we'd never have broken a lot of the poverty in the past. It was Edward the Seventh who had uh, let William Gladstone, W.E. Gladstone, William York Gladstone, take him round the slums of London and see what was in the go. And he was going to throw down, fling down, a handful of sovereigns. And Gladstone said, I pray you not, sir, they will tear us to bits. So uh, that was that. And I'm talking living in cellars on earth floors and that real, real serious suffering and poverty. And the royals over the years have alleviated that time and time and time again. So we need the royals there with the royal commissions, with the studies into poverty, etc., etc. If you took every penny the Queen had and distributed it round the country, no one would be any better off for longer than a few minutes. Uh, snobbery is not for future independent Scotland, says Rudy. Absolutely not. And there's no snobbery in the royals. If you've seen them out and about, if you've met them, if you've talked to them, you'd know there's absolutely no side to them at all. Uh, Labour saved us from poverty after the war, says Sandy Howden. No, 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 no. The war caused the poverty, Sandy Howden. So there you are. And, uh, of course... The likes of Manny Shinwell went a bit too far with uh, um, ploughing up the garden of great residences and things like that when he was in charge of coal and power, uh, light and power. So uh, I'm, I'm afraid Labour didn't save you from poverty, but they did help by bringing in the NHS. Uh, hiya, says Laura Sarsner. Hiya, Laura. Dinky do to you. Scotty, uh, what have we got here? Scotty, Pat said to make why do divers leave a boat backwards? Which said if they fell forwards, they'd still be in the boat. Didn't you do? <laughs> Very good, Ian. We like that. God save the Queen, says Chick Straub. Absolutely. Robert Bain. Uh, so there you go. Excellent stuff. Now, if you've just joined us, folks, and a lot of you have, welcome, 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 I say, to the Scotty McClue Show a global talk show live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform, the one everyone's talking about, the one everyone is watching. I now have control over the 10 to 11 spot in media. Check your televisions and you'll not see anything that will beat this. Listen to your radios, you'll not hear anything that will beat this. So there you go. Uh, there's no snobbery in royalty, absolutely, good for you. God save the Queen, yes indeed. Um, I can't get on, says George. We know that, George. We've heard you talk about it since the start, about how you can't get on. Well, you are on, so it must be something to do with your equipment, because the fact you're on here, telling us you can't get on, means you're on. Big time. Absolutely, understand. Uh, so, who have we got here? No answer to that one, George, says Anna Moyes. Indeed. Time for a cup, I'll be back in five. Even got tablets off the doctor, says George. <laughs> I went into the doctor and said, can you help me out? He said, which way did you come in? Uh, now, there we are. Uh, got doesn't exist, and neither should the Queen. Robert Bain, I'm quite sure got whoever he is exists. Got, G-O-T. And uh, the Queen, of course, tremendous, will always exist. You need to keep the crown. Uh, Labour-controlled council, one Tory, so there we go. Yeah, sharing, caring councils, yeah, we're not going to that. Uh, Scotty, should single mothers who smoke have their bills taken off them? So there you are, that's an interesting thing. If you smoke as a mother, should your child be taken into care? You can let us know about that, give us your comments on here, or uh, come on the Skype, scotty.mcclue, and talk to me live. And uh, the Crown is a lovely pub. That's about it, says Robert Bain. Robert, I don't know what your problem is. You maybe don't see the bigger picture. The Crown is going nowhere. They tried it with Charles I dividing him into a head and a body. It was an absolute shambles. And they got him back. And the cowards were so cowardly that they couldn't pluck up courage to actually do it until about, does it, two o'clock in the afternoon. You'll see the black mark 
still on the clock in St. James's, where they put a black mark at the time that they hanged Charles I, a Scotsman, a Stuart. So there you are. Hello, Scottish, says Gordon Wilson. Dinky do. Uh, seen a wee puffer get up the Clyde the other day, big cloud of black smoke in its trail. Magic to watch, like the Maggie film. I used to go on the puffers a lot when I was tiny, actually. It was wonderful. They would put the puffer in specially and take me on board. And I would be taken up to the wheelhouse and I would get to steer the puffer. And I remember a steam one, the Invercloy. She was actually steam. The Queen is watching this, says Roy Brownlow. I wouldn't be surprised, Roy. Everybody watches Scotty McClue. They may deny it when you ask them. Oh, I, no, 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 not something I've heard. No, not something. No. All these kind of half-witted idiots. But the truth is, they're absolutely glued to it, big style. Uh, Deiros is watching. Hello from Tenerife. Uh, sad news is, I'm back in Glasgow tomorrow, says Steph. Michael Heron, dinky do to you, Steph. Lovely to hear from you. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely trip back to Glasgow from Tenerife. Mothers who smoke should be clapped in irons. Scotty, I think this computer virus could be a ruse and another way for the NHS privatisation. A homegrown plan, says Ian Walker. Ah, well, there you are. You're obviously a conspiracy theorist. They do want to privatise the NHS because it's a very lucrative business. If you make it private, <coughs> you get serious money. But in actual fact, they're getting serious money anyway. Remember, we're paying for it. What they'd be trying to do is get the money twice, the same as with the banks. Uh, what's wrong with single mothers smoking? It'd be okay if they were married. So there you are. So it's the single mothers that shouldn't be smoking. It's okay if they were married. Christopher Anthony Smith's watching. Scott Lockett says, I miss you on the radio. Absolutely, I miss the radio as well. Fantastic stuff. But we have Facebook Live, we have Periscope, and if you all subscribe, we'll have YouTube, and we are building and building and building. Scotty, what do you make of Trump having digs at folk over social media? Yes, a little bit strange. It depends on how seriously you take it. I mean, I use social media for communication, and that's it full stop. I'm not too bothered if people agree or don't agree with me or whatever, or people don't like me. Um, but uh, it's very interesting, as you say, he has digs at people. I think he'd be better actually just getting on and running his country. Uh, missing him, says Hannah. Oh, Scott, I'm sorry, my dear. Scotty, is it true that a few years ago... <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, what's your thoughts on O.J. Simpson's Johnny M. Lilly? Well, we can't go there on here. Um, Trump should sort out the North Korean uh, gentleman, says William. So there we are. Well, I don't know. Trump's had uh, quite an interesting experience to himself. I think uh, he felt that uh, he was going to run the place the same as running the TV show and what have you, you know, saying to uh, the director of the um <laughs> of the security service that uh, you're fired that sort of thing the director of the fbi i mean i i actually tweeted this week i don't know if you saw it could you imagine jack kennedy john f kennedy firing j edgar hoover who had stacks on them right virus in the nhs who would have thought it's as George? Absolutely. I'm sure they could cure a virus. Um, are you going to the big rally in June, the Indy March, from the Botanic Gardens to the square? So will June end May? Yes. Ner caster clut to May's oot. I think that's not the month of May. I think it's the May blossom. So that's that's my thinking on it. We need to check the origin of that, but I think it's the May blossom. Guys, can we have another share? Share, 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 share. Let's get sharing. Tell everybody about Scotty McClue. Tell ten, tell ten, tell ten about Scotty McClue. Live on Facebook Live, just for you. Dinky do. Um, what do you think of the Renault Five? I think they're innocent. So it's Tito the Doug. Another dog's fantastic. 
They are. He gets the bulk of his jokes out of the Christmas crackers second hand. Right, can we start sharing folks now? Tonight I want to discuss the flags, right? Should we ban flags? All right, tell us what you think about that because there's going to be a stushy when Scotland becomes independent and it will do nothing more certain than, uh, you know, we're not going to want to fly any union flags, that's for sure. Flags make a political and constitutional statement. In Scotland in these times, I have absolutely no qualms whatsoever to fly Scotland's national flag. And the day I'm ever encouraged to take it down, something, something, it's gone to see more, Rudy. And um, I'm not going to press see more because the last time I did it, we lost the whole broadcast. Will the elections in June end Theresa May? Well, it's very, very interesting because people are saying, oh, it's going to be a landslide, it's going to be a landslide. It wouldn't be if everybody decided just to tick another box. Just to say, no, we're not having it. We're just going to tick another box. And that power is in the people. We saw it over Brexit with the uh, referendum. You know, we saw the stushy that the referendum over Scotland caused. It was a very close-run thing. And the mainstream media, who I don't trust now, you take them with a sack of salt, right? So every headline you're getting, um, you know, take it with a sack of salt, mainstream media, because it's very, 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 very slanted. So there you go. And you can hear it. You can actually see it. And you think, that's not what happened at all. But the people are getting savvy. And that's why... I'd like to build our own independent media with no agenda. I have no agenda, and I would love to build an independent media. So if you want to go fund me, gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue, or go on to Scotty McClue's website, and you'll see links to PayPal and to GoFundMe, www.scotty hyphen McClue.com. Uh, can you not see his viewing numbers are well down? Only some folk can view them. No, the viewing numbers are up tonight, Anna. They're not well down at all. Should Scotland go down the UDI route, Unilateral Declaration of Independence? Well, it'd be quite good to do it with the blessing of Westminster. I was rather shocked at the attitude when um, our First Minister said, you know, she'd like to call another referendum, and she got, now's not the time. You know, that's the thing, now's not the time. You don't come across with stuff like that you know you actually say well what we'll do is we'll work closely together and see what we can come up with uh do any countries have a brown flag i can't think of any scotty yes maybe it's, it's the connotations you know if you're surrendering and you raise the brown flag that's an idea no you're quite right uh, pay your internet bill says dina the dog <laughs> and then you'll get scotty McClue. Scotty, why are people from another culture allowed to burn our national flag in the streets of Britain? Yet if you burn theirs, we'd be racist, according to Diane Abbott, uh, who has been Seymour. I'm not going on to Seymour, because we lost the broadcast the last time. All Jews are paid here, Dino, says Anna. There you are, Dino, that's you being told straight. Anna's paying her internet bill. A uh, decades-long Tory rule will surely sharpen the focus of Labour and Lib Dem unionists in Scotland. Self-harm doesn't tend to be an overly pleasing long-term pursuit. So there you are. Now, I think really what we've seen is Labour's more or less annihilated itself in Scotland by not backing independence. Had they done that, they would still have been players, and they would have been players nationally as well. Also, I was very unimpressed by the anti-Scottish rhetoric of uh, of the speech that was made by uh, by Labour uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was shocked and shocked at that because Labour should say, look, we understand the Scots. They are with us. They are part of our fabric. They are woven into our tapestry. The Scots are in our DNA. I'm not saying the Scots actually were responsible for the growth of the Labour movement because it grew out of the Chartists and the Peterloo Massacre and all these things, the Luddites and what have you at the start of the Industrial Revolution. But the modern day Labour Party, if you want to call it that, you're looking at the 1890s, the early 1900s, getting in with Keir Hardy and um, R.B. Cunningham Graham and the Duke of Montrose, who, uh, you know, 
formed the SNP at the time. So the SNP grew out of Labour. So they are Labour's natural brethren and sisterhood. So Labour needs to, they need to work out where they're at, you know, because at the moment it looks as if they're just hanging around with the, with the other lot. Uh, good evening, Scotty. Sorry, I'm late, says Ron Stewart. Not at all, Ron. You're here now, and that is what matters. Uh, I was in the Chinese takeaway the other night. The news was... Uh, so there we are. Right, we're not in, into that one. Simon's watching. Excellent. Good evening, Scotty. Uh, you're not missing much, says George Mullen. George, that's cheeky. He's missing the world's top talk show. And it is absolutely tremendous. It is superb. So any more of that, and we'll not be having you. Uh, too negative, I say. The 45% will never forget the manner in which we were denied our own independence. It's why the only real pro-Scottish government haven't and will not go away. Absolutely, we don't want them to go away. Scotland should be an independent country. It's just been held on to by its ankle with a ball and chain by Westminster because Westminster are in a panic. They're going to lose 40 billion quid and the rest. So there you are. Uh, why does the XPM keep going on about poverty? He had a chance to eradicate it, but as usual, done nothing. Did nothing, it would be, Ian. As usual, did nothing. Uh, so there we are. I think by the time Mr. Brown came to power, he felt that the whole thing had already been trashed, you know, uh, from that point of view. Uh, the war did for Labour. The Iraq war did Labour in, actually. That was a bit of a, a, a problem there. Uh, a lot of people are now talking about it, not winning a majority, which was not the case until recently. Something drastic seems to have changed. Well, the Labour manifesto that was leaked the other day uh, was very interesting with nationalisation of the important things in this country. And I'm actually up for that. If you think about it, it was the Tories, Dr. Beeching, who completely damaged the railways. Now, I know you could say some branch lines were not profitable, but it meant you could get everywhere in this country. You could just walk a few steps and get onto a train somewhere. And it's lovely. I mean, these wee stations, as a boy, I can still remember a lot of branch lines working. And you could get the train all round Scotland. You could have your lunch. You could have a drink and travel. People used to work in Edinburgh and go home to the borders and things like that. You could pop into the old you know, tavern and have a quick swift one and then get yourself home for your tea. Does anybody remember the Murray's Diary? Do you know what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, you put that right in Facebook right now that you know what a Murray's Diary is. Uh, so we've got that. A lot of people are now talking about them not winning the majority. So I think that's what came up. The idea of nationalising or renationalising the important things like our utilities company. Because we all need water and we all seem to need electricity and gas. And it's not right that old ladies should be getting uh, you know, reminder letters and bullied into paying bills by utility companies who are making billions of pounds of profit so there we are uh yes that's quite interesting rudy i don't know that i'll go into that rudy um remember guys try and not mention second names of people and try and not mention anyone in a detrimental way as such all's fair as we say scotty why are most of the farmers voting tory don't they know their subsidies are going to stop and they'll be lucky to earn money at the Muckin of Geordie's buyer. Well, of course, you used to get a lot because the farmers were close to the landowners. So you used to get a lot of farmers voting for the land-owning party. You see, let me give you a tiny bit of history here, guys. This country, before it had an industrial revolution, had an agrarian revolution. Now, I don't mean to sound patronising. A lot of you will know this, but a lot of you might not. And therefore, the money was in the countryside because it provided the food. And the people all lived in the countryside because you had villages, towns, estates, all that that were small villages in their own right. And the big money was in the country. Then when you had the Industrial Revolution, it created a lot more wealth for a lot of ordinary people who were workers and uh, built up their businesses. But it also brought the people and the money into the cities 
So the country uh, lost out. And then, of course, the First World War and the Second World War, particularly the First World War, decimated these country houses, these estates. And they were our bread and butter. And, of course, the mines. Britain produced 75% of the world's coal. But we wanted to punish Germany so much in the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, after the First World War, that we went over the top. The whole of Europe went over the top to Germany saying, oh, and another thing, you can give us cheap coal. And, of course, that knocked the stuffing out the British market. Scotty, uh, click here to see more if you want. Uh, any unionist in Scotland who complains about the bleak future living under a Tory-led UK needs to reevaluate what matters to them. Now, I'll tell you what people need to do, Rudy. They need to not say, I will vote for this party or that party because that was the ones my great-grandfather voted for. They need to chuck that and say, hold on, we've got a different animal altogether. So the Conservative Party of today is a million percent, if you could have such a thing, different from the Conservative Party of uh, A.J. Balfour at the turn of the last century. Yeah? Totally different. It's different to the Conservative Party of Churchill, the Conservative Party of Anthony Eden, the Conservative Party of um, Harold Macmillan, of Alec Douglas Hume. These were patrician-like characters they were patrician like characters and they looked after the people they had a sense of the curatorial but it strikes me now that you've got these people who are grabbing who are greedy who think that once they get money they will be a somebody news flash not happening so there you are uh right two right scotty says marcy puffin uh, robert politics affects absolutely every single facet of our lives why on earth would one take no interest? So there you go. Fly the flag with pride. We are the Scottish, says Michael McGuigan. I'm not here for that, Riddy, says Robert Bain. So there we are. Tell us why you're here, guys. Very important. Now, uh, what's the time? Oh, share, 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 share. Excellent stuff. George Mullen, you need to take that back, what you said there. That was I was shocked at you. I really was. Uh, so you need to take that back. Now, guys, a word to the wise, social media wise. I need your help. I will always need your help because this is our show. It's not mine, not anyone else. It's called the Scotty McClue Show. That gives it a handle. But in other words, we are building and building and building, and you need to just share and share and share. Those of you who are not afraid of work, get your mice and start clicking. Uh, what have we got? Politics is about as current a topic as we could get. Scotty, we're all in a big spinning ball hurtling through space at the speed of light. And we're all going to die, Scotty. That's the big picture the politicians should see. Yes, but we have no tension, intention of dying. Uh, within the uh, foreseeable future. We're all doomed, Susanna. Lol. You'll be watching too much Dad's Army. Private Freezer. We're doomed, doomed. Uh, there we are. Ian's on David Ike mode, says George. Yes, actually, I've interviewed David Ike. A fine, fine fellow. Very, very interesting. So there we are. Yes, we are on a big spinning ball. I don't doubt that for one moment. Now, Follow me on Facebook, all the Facebook pages. Follow me on Twitter. Actually get on and do it. Don't go, oh, I must remember to do that. Actually get on and do it. Follow me on Periscope. Find Periscope. Join it. Follow it. Watch the broadcasts. Share the broadcasts. Tell everyone about it. Uh, what else have we got? Ian Walker says, lol. Quite right as well. Uh, let's get sharing, guys. Share, 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 share. Main subjects for discussion. Should we ban flags? Because I think they are divisive, right? We're talking about that. Also, uh, if you were a refugee, where would you go and why? I know there's lots of people are refugees. Uh, I get off the earth, a free card. <laughs> a free card to get off the earth. John Gray is watching. Every single proponent of a future independent Scotland is a national hero. 
bit late, but evening Scotty, says Chris Mack. It's never too late, Chris. It's never too late. And I will upload this to YouTube as well. And you'll be able to watch it forever. Tremendous stuff. And um, so there you are. I agree with that, really. Every single proponent of a future independent Scotland is a national hero. I would go along with that. I most certainly would. Now, remember, guys, you can follow me on uh, Facebook, on Reddit, on uh, Twitter, on Google+, Plus, on LinkedIn. If you're a business person, link in with me, and we will chit-chat. Also, remember... Scotty McClue can be booked at bookings at scotty-mcclue.com. If you're wanting after-dinner speaking, if you're wanting my voice for your commercial, if you want me to appear in your commercial, if you do television, if you do radio, if you advertise in newspapers, and you want Scotty McClue along there, it always sells things. Excellent idea. As for the, uh, the public speaking, I do the conferences, I do the dinners, I do all these things. I might not be the cheapest, but you do get excellent value. That's what matters. Program attracting nutters now. You'll soon be taking over from Jeremy Kyle. Would you believe it? Jeremy Kyle took over from me in Manchester. He inherited the Scotty McClue show in Manchester for the whole of the northwest of England. And that was Jeremy Kyle turning up on the radio with uh, Jezza's Confessions. He was called at the time, so there we are. And... Uh, I thought this was a debate about flags. What happens to the Open Olympic ceremony if they get banned? Well, you can just uh, wave your arms about as you're marching. Not be a problem and you can carry a wee sign or you can have somebody announce it, right? It's very interesting. We are split into countries, but we are all the same. So it doesn't really matter. Brilliant film. Independence Day, says George Raffin. I would go to Mars, somewhere where there's no politicians. I don't know how I'd get there right enough. I've only got a space hopper. Well, if it's a space hopper, you should be able to hop in space. Scotty, with the success of the current Labour Party under the same leadership at the general election be a threat to Scotland gaining its independence, I think you'll find that the vote will split. Labour do not carry weight in Scotland at all. So uh, I don't think it would make any difference. I mean, you're not going to help Scottish independence if people are voting uh, for the Conservative Party, for instance. That's not going to help it. And uh, obviously it's not going to help Scottish independence if people are voting for the Labour Party. So you'd probably be better voting for the actual party who stand for Scottish independence. That would make complete and utter sense. I think that's the first step. And I knew it would happen in two steps, but I would I thought we should have been independent by now. I, I put a wee bit too much trust in the Scottish people recognising the opportunity. And one or two of them just ran for the hills and voted no. But I don't think they'll do it again. I can't see that anybody is that stupid to actually pass up a second chance of independence now that they've seen that there's virtually nothing on offer. Uh, that was promised. Right, uh, do you think most Scottish people are voting SNP because the Labour Party hasn't got Scotland's best interests at heart and are turning away from socialist values? Well, I think the fact they've got Mr Corbyn means that they're back to socialist values and this puts panic into the so-called British establishment because socialist values means that you might not have the rich to the same extent and the rich are obviously looking after what they've managed to beg, borrow or steal over the years and get it offshore. And really, if you had a true socialist government, they'd be saying, by the way, if you stay in Britain, you pay your taxes here. You put your money here. You don't have it offshore. Squirreled away there where nobody gets the benefit of it. So get your money back. If you're a big corporation and you operate in this country, you pay your tax. We're going after the big guys. We're not going after the wee people. That's why you've got cuts in uh, invalidity benefit, in DLA, disability living allowance, all these kind of benefits. Um, the, the, the cars uh, for people who are disabled, looking after disabled people. <coughs> Pardon me. That's why you're seeing all that cut, because these are soft targets who can't 
fight back. But your big guys can fight back. They can say to the tax authorities, you come after us, but we'll employ even smarter accountants. We'll take accountants that used to work for you lot, and we'll get them to do our accounts. And we'll, we'll, we'll take every loophole we possibly can and get a few quid through there. And that's where the government needs to say, no, 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 our guys are so big and so well paid, they'll sort you out and you will be toast and your trillions offshore will come back onshore and go to do some good. I would love Scotland to have the financial capital for Europe. Greenock. I've chosen Greenock because I think it's absolutely superb and it's a town that's had a very tough time in the last 20 or 30 years. Um, do you not mean the English Deej? I don't know what you're talking about, Jim, there. Uh, Indy 2, I can't wait, says Alan Smith. There we are. Fun with flags, says George Mullen. Uh, the Sostuka is banned, but it was used for evil before it was a peaceful thing. Yeah, it was used for other things in peace as well. Uh, you'll see the Sostuka uh, if you go back um, as uh, some businesses actually had that as their uh, their logo. The athletes of the Olympics are not soldiers. Every country has the right to wave the national flag. Well, I know I think it's the right to identify itself. But I think if you're going, hey, we're better than you, that's uh, not really acceptable. I thought you said ban the fags, Scotty, says Dino the Dunk. Oh, poor Sal, he's been worried all evening that he's going to lose his cigarettes. If you ban flags, how are you going to park the airplanes at the airport? And how are footballers going to get caught offside? Think on, people. No, 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 no. You can do that at the airport. You've got the old table tennis bats. Yeah. All that stuff. You've got that going on. And um, I'm quite sure we could find something. We need to keep the wind sock, but that's hardly a flag. So there we are. And, of course, flags, you need the bargee on the ship so that you you know what direction the wind's going in. You would probably need the ensign yeah, and that sort of stuff. Do you know the Doug? I thought you said ban the fags. I think that is a hoot. I really do. Uh, only an independent Scotland can ensure a compassionate and forward-thinking country. Yes, I think the kind of harshness that we've got and the greed that's about with the establishment at the moment, Scotland's not interested in any of that. You see, the beautiful thing about the Scottish government is they are curatorial. They're curating. And Scotty McClure is a massive fan of curating stuff for the next generation. Because sadly, we'll not all be here forever. Uh, so there we are. Um, Unionists in Scotland by voting no declared Scotland not to be a country, but a mere state. Very sad truth, I'm afraid. Yes, I wonder why are there Unionists in a Scottish Parliament? You know. Anyway, we're talking a lot about Scotland, guys. And the whole world's watching. The Americans will be getting a bit fed up with this. They'll be fascinating, but they'll be thinking, Ah, oh, God, it's all about Scotland again. Uh, so there we are. Scotty, what are your thoughts on the UK government wanting to bring back fox hunting? Well, you see, I'm actually a great fan of the fox. I think they are magnificent creatures. And, um, you know, they do their bit in the food chain to keep other things down. Uh, you don't want them in your hen house, let's be honest about it. So the farmers get a bit uh, trigger happy when the foxes are about. But they're very, very beautiful creatures, very, very clever creatures. And where I object to the hunting thing is the digging out of the fox and then letting the hounds, um, you know, rip it to bits. That's not sport. That's not brave. That's not big. That's not clever. So, you know, get the uh, cinnamon or whatever it is that they ride out to. Send somebody on the trail with it in the morning. The aniseed, I should say. Sorry, not the cinnamon. Get the aniseed out. Uh, you know, ride the marches in the morning with the aniseed. Then let the hounds go out and chase and find the aniseed. You know, but not the fox. I mean, leave the fox alone and there should be no digging out. Anybody caught digging out, instant in prison sentence. Right away. Same as uh, as killing birds of prey. Prison. Slammer. Into the slammer with them. 
Uh, maybe we've been blocked, George says Anna Moyes, you certainly have not. Half the show about Scotland again, says Steve Burroughs. Steve, where are you from? Let us know where you're from, La. And I'm apologising. The uh, barbarism of man has no boundaries, says Rudy. Yeah, but it's interesting, Rudy. There's a lot of people getting educated now. And the barbarism is changing. But I've observed when I've been uh, working with people and doing uh, the observer bit, I've noticed that the females are more creative and the males can be destructive. So I watched actually somebody building a house of cards, uh, two ladies building a house of cards, and the guy's going, hey, can I knock it down? You see, now that's an interesting one there. So guys need to watch themselves. Spot on, Scotty, says Morsi Puffin, indeed, and you, Morsi. Dinky do, go fund you, says Ron Stewart. Yes, everybody go fund Scotty McClude. Go to gofundme.com, gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Stick in a fiver or a tenner. Somebody was so generous yesterday. We've achieved 8% of our target. Hey, from Nottingham in Bathford. Yeah, of course, Steve. I beg your pardon. I'm with you now. I should have remembered that. For fox's sake, don't hunt these lovely animals. For fox's sake, don't hunt these lovely animals, says George Raffin. You're quite right, George. And the digging out, as I say, anybody caught digging out into the slammer with them right away. Transportation to Australia. If Scotland goes independent, are you planning to enter the Eurovision Song Contest, says Deej Maximus. Yes, I think I might enter it with the goodbye song. You know the one I sing at the end of the programme, which I'll be singing in about five minutes' time. Have we time for a share, guys? It's been a wonderful programme tonight. I don't care if one or two of you go, oh, what's all this? Oh, oh, oh. I don't care, right? Because the thing is, thousands upon thousands of you are seeing this program during the week for that i do care i'm eternally grateful because we're growing something very big and very beautiful and very global and this is the way television companies are asleep at the wheel at the moment trust me so they're just putting on any old stuff they can find in the attic out of a can so that you'll hopefully watch it and they're very very long commercial breaks news flash not happening. If you haven't got Scotty McClure on, late night television, that's where Scotty McClure should be. Late night television, half an hour, on the phones, talking to you lot, live. That's what should be going on. Good night, my friends, says Ron Stewart. Dinky do to you. Uh, feeling very strongly against fox hunting. How can it be called sport? It's barbaric, says Angela. You're quite right. Uh, is it not past your bedtime, Mr. McClure? Says Andy Seeger, yes, very much so. Very early start in the morning. Scotty, the boss in the dike, says Ian Walker. Yes, absolutely, time to go. If you have no interest in politics, you have no interest in Scotland, says Rudy Zach. Very, very interesting, Rudy. Very, very good point. Now, guys, when this program finishes, your job, and it is a job, is to spend the week sharing it. It's wonderful when I see 90 people have liked your video. But I want to see 90 people have loved your video. 90 people have also shared your video. That's why I send stuff around with share, share, share. Excellent. Good night, Scotty. Cracking show again, Sir Jim Coyle. Nearly lights out. Absolutely. And uh, Scotty, wear the fox hat, says Dino the dog. Excellent stuff. Right. Time for one more share. And also, as soon as the program's finished, if you're feeling flush and you've got a couple of spare pounds, pop it into gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure. Or, of course, you can go to PayPal and go paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClure on one word. Hope to see you next week, says Anna Moyes. I hope so. Night, Scotty. Great to hear you, says Marcy Puffin in Australia. And uh, fantastic. Lovely to hear you, Morphy. Go from strength to strength. Morsi Puffin, our precious one. And uh, great show. Good night, Sir Jim Clark. Scotty, it takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day. You'll get your viewers. Night, night, Scotty, says Alan Smith. Night, night to all you lovely guys. Now I'm going to sing the song. So get your fingers into your ears. Careful what you're doing, of course, though. And goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. 
Goodbye, everybody, of Wittersein, au revoir, and a cheerio. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a fabulous week. This is Scotty McClue saying to every one of you, Dinky-doo, Scotty McClue has left the building.